Hey, what's up guys, Assassin here, welcome back to another episode of Dirty Bomb. Today we're going to talk about everything in the Final Assault update. Now I do know I'm really late to the party, but for the people who haven't read all of the patch notes or are living under a rock, this video is for you. Splash damage, please bring back the quick opening. Of course, this event is in honor of the removal of Execution. Unfortunately, the 22nd of August, Execution will be removed from this game. So the reasoning behind this is because only 5% of the people actually play this mode. Most of the people that play it do it only for the 500 credits for the daily reward. And since the daily reward thing has been changed altogether anyways, removing Execution at this point of time is probably just the best solution. So if you do want to play some more Execution, do it before the 22nd of August. August. And since Execution was released with the Containment War update, now we have a second generation Containment War update, which is really awesome. So basically from now on, until the 22nd of August, you'll be able to gain Final Assault equipment cases just by playing as a drop or by buying them for 1000 credits. And these contain a 2% chance of receiving a Gen 2 Containment War card, which is really awesome. So we have also some extra mercs that weren't in the original Containment War update. I think Amy, Turtle and mm, that's basically it, I think. So like I said, the 2% chance was actually really, really good. That's the same as a silver. Unfortunately, they don't drop as a guaranteed case. Though you can buy the elite ones, the five pack will give you one guaranteed case and the 10 pack will give you two. Unfortunately, the actual elite cases themselves don't include a chance. I don't know why, kind of sucks. So just be aware of that. Alongside with these cases and execution being removed, we see the second edition of the Obsidian Operatives, this time for Phantom and Phantom only. So there are three available loadouts, you can buy them individually for 15 euros or your local equivalent, or you can buy the bundle for 25. Uh, I don't really see why anyone would buy the one. Uh, and actually all of them have the katana, which is great. I think this is by far the best character model they've done so far. I'm not a huge fan of Phantom and I'll definitely play him a lot more because of the skins. So if you are interested, snag them up before the 22nd of August because that will be your last chance. Talked a little bit about it before but like the daily play bonuses have been changed. So before you got of course the 500 for each game mode and the 500 for the first win. They totally overhauled this, in my opinion, for the better. So now we have a similar system to other games where you have to play daily and get rewarded. The nice thing about this is you can miss a day and still get the reward so it doesn't reset. And every week the system resets for everybody. So the first day you get 1500 credits, then you get a case, another 1500 credits, another case, another 1500 credits. And the final two days are two cases. Unfortunately at the moment they don't show the actual percentage of the card drops. I'm assuming they are slightly higher than just normal equipment cases. And maybe in the future we'll see extra additions like maybe crafting kits, weapon kits, whatnot. So that would be really, really awesome. And finally, we can open our proxy cyber eye case. Really, really cool. So of course the Corsic I won. So I guess now everybody has one extra special proxy. So a pretty big thing performance wise, they added dynamic resolution. Basically what this means is the game will lower your resolution in order to keep up with a certain FPS that you set it. Uh, you can set it between 30 and 60. Basically what this means is if your game drops below 60, it will lower your resolution scale in order to keep up to that 60 minimum FPS. And the render scale goes from 50 to 100. So 100 of course being the default and 50 is basically half the resolution. Personally I haven't experienced this new feature because my PC is good enough to always run at like at least 100 FPS. But I assume that for lower spec PCs this is a pretty pretty good feature. Alongside with all of the previous mentioned things they did a lot of merc balance improvements. So some mercs of course got a buff and others got nerfed. So we'll start just an alphabetical order. Amy's snitch device is slightly better. So they reduced the detection time from 0.6 seconds to 0.3, basically meaning that if you are in range, you will detect it faster, but like very, very minimal. Aura's health station actually got a pretty decent nerf. So the base healing rate went from 31 to 26 and your own base healing rate from 28 to 24. So there's actually a pretty decent nerf, unfortunately. And also there was a bug with potent packs didn't improve the actual healing station rate. So that's fixed now. That's great. 
For Bushwhacker they increased the turret HP from 110 HP to 120, which is great. And the cooldown was reduced from 35 seconds to just 30, so Bushwhacker is a little bit better to play. Still, in my opinion, not as good as all of the other engineers. Speaking of engineers, Fletcher got a pretty major nerf. So first of all, they increased the cooldown time from 8 to 9 seconds. But above all, they reduced the radial damage from 85 to 75. Meaning that you can't one hit kill phoenixes anymore, which really really sucks. The direct stick damage is still 15, meaning that the max damage for one sticky ball is 90, where it used to be 100. And believe me, for veteran Fletcher players, this will definitely impact your gameplay a lot. So to make Phoenix a little bit more useful, they drastically decreased the cooldown for his self-revive feature from 60 seconds to just 25, which I think is really really good. Because 60 seconds is really long, and if your game only lasts for 10 minutes, you can only do it 10 times maximum. Stoker got a very very basic buff, basically the mult of the damage is increased by roughly 10%. Thunder got a slight nerf, he went from 170 HP to just 160 where he used to be and they reduced the maximum blind and stun duration by a half a second. Turbo got both a nerf and a buff depending how you look at it. So first of all they increased the shield cooldown from 25 to 30, so that's of course the nerf. The buff however is that extender augment now will increase the size by 25% instead of 20. Depending on who you ask, this is either good or bad because some people don't really like the extender augment in the first place. A lot of people prefer of course Teddy, but at least now his shield is a little bit bigger. So for both Arty, Skyhammer, Sawbones and Sparks, so basically all of the mercs who can drop ammo pouches or health packs, they increase the lifespan before it despawns from 25 to 35 seconds. And this is great because especially if you drop ammo pouches in spawn, they won't despawn as fast. I don't really see the use of dropping med packs in the spawn. But anyways, now all of the droppable items will stay for 10 seconds longer before despawning, which is awesome. And an ammo station got a pretty major cooldown reduction from 25 seconds to just 15 making both Kira and Stoker a little bit more in place with Arty and Skyhammer. And then they did some more bug fixes. I think the only really noticeable one is the Molotovs weren't dealing damage to objectives and now they are. And the bug where explosive damage on someone who was in midair could insta-gip them and that's now fixed too. And this was especially a problem if you had a Fletcher player. So that's basically everything in this update. I think it is a really good update. Personally, I think none of the mercs got like a massive nerf. They're still all really good. Most of them got a little bit better. I think the merc that got shafted the most is Fletcher. I would have loved to see them increase the direct stick damage from 15 to 25. So it makes up for like the decrease on the radial damage. Because they argued it was too spammy. That way you reduce the spamminess, but you can still keep the effectiveness on phoenixes. So all in all, I think it's an amazing update. I really do like the second edition containment war cards. Those are absolutely awesome. I think for a lot of people, those are definitely the favorite skins in the game. And it's cool because a lot of new players haven't played during the original containment war event. So they will still have a chance to get those cards. And of course, we have now cards for Amy and Turtle as well. So do let me know what you think of this event. I'm a huge fan of it. If you like this video, please leave a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next one.